Hi, I'm Paris, and talking to you about a little bit more serious issue today, it's Alzheimer's. Now, due to some events and circumstances recently, I have been brought back to a test that I took a couple years ago from 23andMe. If you follow this channel for a while, you may remember when I took that DNA test and they gave me my health report telling me you have an increased chance of getting these illnesses. However, on the other hand, you have a decreased chance of getting these illnesses. And there were two locked reports in there, one for Alzheimer's and one for Parkinson's. And when I ordered the test, originally I thought, oh, I'll open them up, I don't care. But in the test, um, the in order to unlock that result, you have to read through information that says, not everyone who has this particular marker on their DNA will come down with these diseases. However, you do have an increased lifetime chance. Make sure you understand that. Because once you know it, you can't unknow it. Anyway, I chickened out basically and decided this was, again, a few years ago. There really didn't seem to be any treatment for either of those illnesses. So why find out? There was some interesting discussion in the comments on that video about whether I made the correct choice morally to, um, to not gain that information because um, I'm responsible for my family and so forth, and maybe I should know that. But in, in any case, I decided I didn't want to spend the rest of my life being paranoid every time I forget where I put my car keys, wondering, oh no, is this the start of Alzheimer's? So I decided not to unlock those tests and I left it. I haven't been back in like a year and a half actually to look at that. Well, I've been getting, here's one of the events and circumstances that came up. I've been getting emails from 23andMe that they're going to be converting my setup of what I can see about my health over to the new system, which gives you far less information. And they basically say, you got a short period of time here. If you want to know the results of those tests that are locked, you're going to have to unlock them now and see that because you won't have that option once we transition you over. So that's one of the events. Now, another is that a close friend of the family, up where my family lives in Washington State, his son was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's at 35 years old and was told um, he wouldn't recognize anyone or anything probably within about 10 years. So to plan accordingly. Now, Alzheimer's, part of what makes it so terrible is that it's traditionally been thought there's nothing you can do about it. And so I was interested well, the last time I was at my doctor's office a month back, um, they do integrative medicine where they take the best of Western medicine as well as uh, more alternative ideas. They find what works, doesn't matter where it comes from, and put that together to help you with your health care. I really like that. I really like them. Saw that uh, the lead doctor there was doing a seminar on treating Alzheimer's, including reversing Alzheimer's. And I thought, yeah, that's a little too alternative because there have been so many medicines that have gone through the research cycle to treat Alzheimer's and have failed. Nobody seems to be, uh, nobody seems to know how to get ahead of this to prevent it or how to treat it once it started. So her seminar about reversing cognitive decline, I really like them and I respect them. And I thought, well, if she's giving this seminar, maybe she knows something I don't. So I decided to go and attend that and it was very interesting. I'll share a little bit of that with you here. Um, a, a couple quick steps that um, are very good to take and I took the very next day um, to help prevent getting in a, in a situation where you have any kind of serious cognitive decline. Also, I will show you what my results showed me because I decided um, two nights ago after thinking about different things, knowing that I would lose the option to find out this information, knowing that after attending this seminar, it's not as black and white as Alzheimer's is just gonna happen to follow its course and there's no way you can change that. There's actually, especially if you catch it early, apparently a great deal you can do. And I will link to a website of a doctor who's doing a lot of studies in this that um, the doctor who I saw doing the seminar reported on this other person's work. So I'll link to that in the description down below this video so you can check it out for yourself. But I decided, and I, I admit this was after um, having a beer as well, and it was rather late in the evening, and I decided, all right, I'm going to unlock the results and see. First of all, I want to be clear that I'm telling you what I heard my doctor say in a seminar, so you're getting this secondhand. Plus, I have no medical training. I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on YouTube. So I just want to make that clear. 
Okay, of the 244 drugs that drug companies have got at least partway through the testing process to treat Alzheimer's, only one has actually been approved. You've probably seen TV commercials for it. Why is it 243 out of 244 drugs failed? Well, the thinking is of uh, Dr. Bredesen and um, my doctor as well, is that they're they're focusing on the fact that you have these amyloid plaques in the brain that stop the neurons from being able to communicate and things sort of break down from there and the drug companies are saying, all right, what can we put in somebody that will break that stuff down? But they're not going far enough back to ask the question, what's causing it in the first place? Why is that forming? And is there something we can do to change the course of those particular things being formed. It's the thinking of the doctors who believe Alzheimer's can be stopped and even reversed if you catch it early on, that it's really a lifestyle, diet, and physical exercise type combination that does most of the damage and that those plaques that are formed that you see as evidence of Alzheimer's and that do block the neurons from talking, they're sort of the byproduct of what damage is being done to the brain. It's not that they're just being, it's not a simple cause and effect thing. Instead, there are a bunch of causes related to being overweight, not exercising, not getting enough sleep, um, not eating the healthy foods you should, and eating foods that are actually really terrible for you and mess up your intestine, mess up your microbiome that lives in the intestine. And a combination of things that we're doing to ourselves produce a number of effects in the body, one of which happens to be those plaques that form in the brain. If you go back to the root cause of it and fix the issues with how you live, you can actually, they have found in a small study and a larger study that's coming out very soon, found that people who adhered very strongly to um, the changes that were recommended, in addition to doing supplements and some other things, were able to reverse their Alzheimer's, reverse their cognitive decline. I don't know that you can say they reversed the Alzheimer's because I don't know what the, that they had any imaging done that showed the status of the the plaques or if you can even see that without an autopsy yet. Yeah, you wouldn't want to have that done just out of curiosity. Um, however, you can see in their results where they do uh, very quantifiable testing of their vocabulary, math skills, and memory, you can see where they went down, 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 and once they made the changes, came back up to where they were before if you catch it early enough. Now, I don't have the PowerPoint demonstration to put up that she showed in her seminar, but I will tell you some of the helpful things you can do to stop going down the path towards Alzheimer's and uh, reverse early Alzheimer's, or at least the cognitive decline portion of it. If you believe it is possible that it's um, a lifestyle thing, it's within your power to change it. Diet is the most crucial thing. I just mentioned and some of it is counterintuitive, but for the large part, most people know what they shouldn't be eating. People know what they should be eating more of, vegetables and fruits and fish and nuts, that sort of thing. An interesting thing I didn't know about is fasting every day. Well, actually fasting every night. Fasting means you don't consume anything that has sugar in it. So um, you can have an herbal tea or something like that or water, but you can't have anything with sugar because the sugar or any other food it starts the digestive process all over and apparently to help the brain clear out what, what un, undesirable things have collected in there during the day, you need to have a period of at least 12 hours of fasting. And the problem is a lot of people now eat really late, watch TV at 11 o'clock, watch uh, Jimmy Fallon or something. You got Burger King commercials going with, on your giant size TV with the hamburger this big, with the grease dripping off, of course you're hungry and you wanna go out and get some. You can't do that though. You need to have at least 12 hours, even a little longer is better, with no food. So if you can stop eating at seven at night, then you can have breakfast at seven, 7.30 in the morning. Some people in this, um, who are on the regimen to try to help with this, actually don't eat breakfast at home anymore. They bring it with them and eat it at work at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, to give them 13, 14 hours of no food because it really does help. Exercise. Your doctors will tell you to do these, um, these exact steps for a number of things. And sleep. Who gets enough sleep anymore? I can't think of anyone. Everyone seems to be sleep deprived and it turns out you do pay a price for not getting that sleep because it, it does have an impact on your brain. 
Now there are a number of uh, things to watch in terms of being low in certain minerals, vitamins and so forth, I won't go into that, but there is a pathway by which those amyloid plaques get created. And along the pathway, depending uh, on, on the health of your brain, this particular, I guess it's a protein, can be cleaved in one spot or another. And normally it's this one spot, which it then goes on basically to help clean out that sort of stuff. But if it gets cleaved in the wrong place, which is what happens when your brain's not doing well, the situation there isn't good, and so you end up uh, basically breaking that protein in the wrong place, it's what goes on to contribute to the plaques. And there are two things you can take, uh, again, according to the seminar I attended, that are very helpful for making sure that the cleaving occurs in the correct part of that protein. And these are both over-the-counter things. One is, um, um, this is a little different name, it's curacumin. It's the spice, a spice that's used a lot in India. You can tell I got a big old bottle of it. And the other, let me see if I can pronounce this one, ashwagandha. I'll, I'll make sure I have these spelled out correctly again down below this video so you can um, know the names of these in case you're interested in it. I'm not entirely sure what this one does. I'm guessing it's an herbal thing, but all I know is they said it, it helps your stuff cleave, and so I want it all cleared up. I do have to say the results that were presented in terms of people having a, quite a significant improvement in their cognitive function were really, wow, impressive. Um, especially one of them was a, a professor, a PhD, I think, who had, you could see where he was obviously a very intelligent man and his um, level of uh, vocabulary use and understanding and so forth just went down in such a sad fashion that he was losing those abilities. But when he went on this particular regimen, Within a short amount of time, it started going back up and it went up about to where he was before. But again, that's based on catching it early. Once the, the damage in the brain has gotten to the point where neurons have actually died, you can't get that back. So long as it's, again, this is my understanding of it, so long as it's a matter of the connections aren't working right, you may be able to repair the connections. But once it's gone on long enough that the neurons themselves are starved out and die, you're not going to be able to get back whatever that memory was related to that group of neurons, that's going to be gone for good. Based on the fact that I believe now that there is a, a regimen you can go on, kind of a common sense regimen in some ways about get enough sleep and make sure you're doing exercise several times a week and don't eat the bad stuff and eat more of the good stuff, I decided I would unlock the Alzheimer's... Um, it's called an EPO4, EPO4 marker that people, you can get a copy from one parent apparently, or you may get it from both parents. If you have one copy of it, it increases your Alzheimer's risk a certain amount. If you have two copies of it, it increases quite a bit more. So it's not telling you you're going to get Alzheimer's because there are a number of people who develop Alzheimer's that don't have it. But amongst the people who have this, they have a disproportionately higher number of them who do develop Alzheimer's, so it seems to make you prone towards it even more. And I decided I wanted to know that risk for myself, so let me show you what I found out. This is my home page of my DNA information, the hundreds of thousands of points that they tested back when they were doing the 23andMe testing for $99. And up here in the blue bar, it says that you may soon lose access to some things. So if you want to know those results, you better unlock them now. And this is all sort of interesting, but let me go up here to my results, health risks. Now under locked reports, you can still see the Parkinson's disease risk. I didn't see any need to take a chance on finding out more bad news than necessary the other night. So I have not unlocked that one and I'm not sure if I'm going to. First, they show you things you have elevated risk for, some of which um, make sense considering what I know about my family history. And also the number of stars indicates how much more likely you are to, how confident they are that this is an accurate predictor of the risk. And down here, Alzheimer's disease, they're fairly confident. However, my risk is 4.3%. The average risk in the population is 7.2. So my risk is actually less. That means I don't have even one copy of that EPO4 marker in my DNA. 
On the page, it tells you more about the testing and the condition. My result compared to average results. There's a video they recommend you watch, and that's about the APOE gene. And things you can do to um, reduce your risk of Alzheimer's, things that they talk about with take care of your heart. Growing evidence suggests a link between heart health and brain health. Take care of your heart, um, control your blood pressure, weight, cholesterol, diabetes. It can help with Alzheimer's. It's not that those conditions are causing you to come down with Alzheimer's. It's that the same thing you're doing to yourself that caused you to have heart disease and diabetes and high cholesterol and are overweight also damages your brain in a way that causes Alzheimer's. Turns out it's a lot simpler and a lot more complicated all at the same time because you don't take a pill that clears out all those plaques in your brain. Instead, you have to go several steps back in the process of what caused them, fix those issues, and it's rarely just one. It's usually a combination of issues which then multiplies, they estimate up to 30-something different factors that contribute to Alzheimer's, but their root source is back to sleep and exercise and stress and eating the right foods. So it's, it, if it were easy to fix those things, nobody would be fat and everybody would be a lot healthier. But the good news is you can affect it, um, you can improve it if you catch it early enough, and it's in your control. You don't have to wait for the drug companies to come out with some expensive medication you'll have to take for the rest of your life. If you make the decision to improve your health in ways that will not only reduce the risk of Alzheimer's, but all of those other things that so many people are coming down with these days, the diabetes and high blood pressure and heart disease, it'll help to save you from all of those. So it's probably a good idea to do. I am trying to do all of those things. Some days succeeding better than others, but this is one more reason why I'm going to redouble my efforts. And I will give you updates on how that goes for me. You can keep checking back for that video, or you can click that subscribe button down below. You'll get notified when our videos go up. See you on the next review. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows. But before he goes shopping, he watches our videos.